Okay, good day. Welcome to the future. This is Jim Pytel, your instructor at EET 111 at Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. Okay, today we're going to go over the superposition theorem. What the superposition theorem is, I kind of uh, summate it as no duh. It's one of those neat theorems that makes total practical sense and it's very easy to use. Um, Basically, given a network with two sources like we've got here, we've got a 54 volt source on the left, and we've got a 48 volt source here on the right, and they're going to work together to provide a current that's going to be going through one of through these resistors here. And basically, their effects add up. That's all the superposition theorem states. Basically, you can Again, anything with two or more sources uh, that are not exactly series and parallel, we can use this method. Very similar to the mesh and nodal analysis. What's really cool about the superposition theorem, you don't need to calculate or do all the matrix math. Um, what's really neat about the superposition theorem is the fact that you can actually analyze what each individual source is providing to a particular quantity of interest. Um, let's see. Basically, it's the algebraic sum. The response is basically the algebraic sum of uh, the individual responses. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So basically, first step is basically pick one source. Step two, remove the rest. I don't know how many there are of the rest. In this case, there's only two sources, so you gotta just pick one and remove the other one. How do you remove it? Basically, if it's a voltage source, you replace it with a short circuit. If it's a current source, you replace it with an open. Three, summate the responses. Okay, step four. There's always a step four. Not valid for power. Okay? Reason why it's not valid for power, because remember, from our graph camp from Ohm's Law, power is a nonlinear relationship. Should have a curve like that. Linear relationships, voltage and current, you can summate not valid for power. Okay? So we need to start redrawing this network. How you do it is grab yourself a colored pen or a colored pencil and redraw it for the 54 volt source. So here's our 54 volt source. He's still hooked up to the 24 ohm resistor which is still hooked up to the 12 ohm resistor, which is hooked up to our 4 ohm resistor. But now we get to our 48 volt source. What are we going to replace it with? Well, since it's a voltage source, we replace it with a short. We just go ahead and analyze this network according to the 54 volt source. Okay, so how does the 54 volt source react? Well, it's going to start producing a current that's going to go travel in this direction. And at this point right here, it's going to split up between the 12 ohm resistor and the 4 ohm resistor. So we need to first off find out what our source current is. Now, watch how I do my notations. My source current prime is equal to the applied voltage by the total resistance. The reason why I say prime is because it is not the total source current as seen by this network over here. Because remember, there's two voltage sources. It's just the network, excuse me, just the source current seen by this network over here. Okay? So in this network, it's 54 volts divided by the total resistance. Well, what is the total resistance? Well, it's the 4 in parallel with the 12 plus the 24. Okay, so what's 4 in parallel with 12? Just use our little formulas. 
12 divided by, excuse me, 12 times 4 divided by 12 plus 4 gives us a 3 ohm resistance. So 24 plus 3 is equal to 27. Okay, so 54 divided by 27 is equal to 2 amps. Now, very, very important. Which direction is it going? It's going this way. So now, at this point, we would reasonably suspect that it's going to split. So this one goes down, and that one goes that way. This is the one we're interested in. So we have to use our current divider rule now at this point. So current divider rule states that we summate 12 plus 4, and it's 2 amps coming into the node. This is for the I prime through the 12 ohm resistor. And we're looking for the one for the 12, so it's not the one. Basically, 4 sixteenths of 2 amps. So it's 0.5 amps, and it's going down. Okay? So we've solved half of the problem here. We know that the 54 volt source is making a current of 0.5 amps go through the 12 ohm resistor. Okay, if there was 0.5 amps, this is a little aside here, if there was 0.5 amps going through this resistor, we would expect a power of P equals I squared R. So 0.5 squared times 12 equals 0.5 squared times 12 equals 3 watts. Okay, that's a little aside. We'll keep that thing in our pocket for later. Now, now we'll go ahead and replace, uh, we're actually going to go back to our first network here, and we're going to go ahead and analyze it from the 48 volt source. So we need to remove the 54 volt source, which was right here. So how do we, what do we do to remove it? We replace a short circuit right there. Okay, so now the 48 volt source is going to produce a current that's going that direction. And once it gets to this node, it's going to split up between the 4 and the 24, which are now in parallel. Okay? in series with a 4. So I double prime S is going to be equal to E divided by the total resistance. In this case it's 48. And what is our total resistance? So 12 times 24 divided by 36 gives us an 8 ohm resistance plus the 4 ohm resistance is 12. So it's going to give us 4 amps going this way, okay? Once it gets to this point here, it's going to divide in this direction and that direction. We've got to use the current divider rule. So I double prime 12 is equal to 12 plus 24 times 4 amps. And now we want not the 1, so it's 24. So 24, 36 of 4 amps, oops, times 4 amps, so 24 divided by 36 times 4, it's going to equal 2.667 amps. Now a very critical point here, it's going up through there, so it needs to be this way. So just as an aside here, we want to calculate what the power would have been if there were 2.667 amps. Again, P equals I squared R. It would have been 2.667 squared times 12. Which gives us 85.33 watts. Okay, now we've got a point where we've got to unify everything. So, the current, the real current, according to the superposition theorem, is the algebraic sum of that induced 
by the 50 volt source 